Hey everybody, this is Andy Kushner, host of The Wedding Biz, in which I conduct in-depth and revealing interviews of icons and those who I feel are the next generation icons of the weddings and event industry. And this is all to provide education and inspiration for any entrepreneur, but especially those of us who are event industry professionals. And I wanna mention, as I always do, because every conversation is so amazing, last week's, if you missed it, was of Debbie Geller owner of Geller Events, and it was actually part two. Part one was really incredible. I felt the need to definitely follow up with Debbie, and she did not disappoint. She's a very seasoned planner who orchestrates logistically complex events, both in the Los Angeles area and worldwide, and her innovative concepts have gotten her quite a group of clients, including a bunch of high net worth families. And so definitely check out that interview. And so today's is really interesting. It was different for me because I interviewed this person in front of a live crowd, which is really just the beginning. I'm also going to be doing that at the NACE National Conference in Ohio in July. I'm also going to be speaking there about how you can leverage podcasts to help the marketing of your own business. But I am going to interview someone there. So that's what I did this time. And it was in front of WIPA, Wedding International Professionals Association, which is a not-for-profit association for leading wedding professionals in North America and soon around the world. And their mission, which I support, is to provide industry-leading education for the members and to produce inspirational networking events and advance the ethical standards of the wedding industry. So I interviewed this person in front of the crowd of the chapter of Washington, D.C. It was sold out. It was a wonderful group of people. And also Tara uh, Melvin from Perfect Planning was the one who produced it. And the person was Carl Ray, a celebrity makeup artist who has been in the beauty industry for over 18 years. And since 2009, he's been the official makeup artist for former First Lady Michelle Obama. And his experience includes an incredible long roster of notable clientele, including Meryl Streep, Natalie Portman, Paul McCartney, Melinda Gates, Priscilla Chan Zuckerberg, Leonardo DiCaprio, Morgan Freeman, Lynn Manuel Miranda, former President Bill Clinton, and former President Barack Obama. Carl's work has appeared on and in the magazine covers and pages of publications, including Vogue, Glamour, In Style, Cosmopolitan, Ebony, Essence, Harper Bazaar, People and Time. Also, Carl was voted the top makeup artist since 1999, every year in Washingtonian Magazine in Washington, D.C. Don't forget to listen on Wednesday in a couple days to the follow-on segment with each interview, which is the next level, in which I have a guest co-host and we tease out some of the highlights in order to help break them down into some specific tactics and tips for you to use to bring your business to the next level. And my guest co-host on the next level is going to be Julie Sabatino of The Stylish Bride, the perfect perfect person to talk about Carl with me. So enjoy my conversation with Carl Ray. So hey everybody, this is Andy Kushner with The Wedding Biz, in which I conduct in-depth and revealing interviews of icons and who I feel are the next generation of icons in the weddings and event industry. And this is all to provide education and inspiration for any entrepreneur, but especially those of us in the event industry, event industry professionals. And I am so excited today because we're recording live at the GREET event for Washington, D.C. chapter of WIPA. Wedding International Professionals Association, a not-for-profit association for leading wedding professionals in North America and soon around the world. And WIPA's mission is to provide industry-leading education for our members, produce inspirational networking events, and advance the ethical standards of the wedding industry. So we appreciate WIPA for having have me interview Carl in front of the whole crowd. And I want to start, Carl, with a quote. We'll see if you recognize who said it about you. Carl takes the time to understand you so that his work is authentic to who you are. That is a truly exceptional talent. I feel fortunate to call him my friend. Carl, you know who said that? I do. Who said that? Michelle Obama. That's right. Michelle Obama said that. And, you know, when Michelle said that you take the time to understand someone so that your work is authentic to who they are, like, what do you think that she meant by that? I think she means I get to know the person and bring out their inner beauty and who they are and not change so much who they are, but embrace who they are and bring out their inner beauty. But how, you know, it's interesting to me, that seems like an incredibly overwhelming task to bring out their inner beauty, you know, and I know that makeup really is an art, right? They call you a makeup artist because it is an art. So in terms of bringing out the inner beauty, it seems like there's so much subjectivity 
to that for you? How do you do that? I get to know my the person I'm working with. I ask them questions. I spend time with them. Just get to know them. Well, you know, I want to go back and then come back to that in a minute. Where did you grow up? I grew up, my father was in the military. I grew up in Naples, Italy, Robot, Morocco, and Puerto Rico, and moved to Virginia Beach, Virginia when I was 14. Wow. Was there anything back in your childhood that essentially kind of ignited this passion for you for makeup? I mean, anything back then? Growing up, I went to a lot of museums. I was always very, very artistic. And I always took in the cultures of the places I was at and very much recognized the beauty and different types of beauty around the world at a very young age. Well, so what was the moment where it first hit you that makeup artistry was how you wanted to kind of make that happen and manifest that passion of yours? I was 14 years old. My parents were going through a divorce. I'm an only child. I would watch my mother doing her makeup in the bathroom and I thought I could do a better job. And I asked her if I could do her makeup and she obliged. Wait a minute, how old were you when you did this? 14. You're 14, so wait, I'm trying to imagine your mother sitting there doing her makeup? First she wore a lot of wigs, my mom did. So there'd be wig heads and I would draw faces on the wig heads. (laughs) That's how I got started. And then I was, wanted to do her. But what did she say when you said that? I mean, was she taken aback? Oh no, she was into it. Yeah, she was waking me up the next week. Like, get up, do my makeup. Do you remember that first moment when you did it? And this Yeah, is- I felt pure joy. I mean, I made her happy. I felt happy. People were noticing it. And um, it was a feel-good moment. I felt really good. But you were just making it up as you went along when you did this with your mother? I mean, I always looked at fashion magazines and everything. Yeah, it was just a natural thing for me. So what did you do after that? I mean, so you kind of forgot school- about it for a while. Oh, did you? Yeah. Did you go to college? I was in the military. You were in the military. I was. I was in the Air Force. No kidding. What did you do in the Air Force? I was an air traffic controlman. That's interesting. So how many years did you do that? Like two or four? Two. You did two? And I was like, I got to (laughs) go. Is anybody surprised here? (laughs) So what did you do after that? I started working at a beauty. It was FX. It's now Blue Mercury. So I worked in beauty salons and beauty outlets for like makeup moisturizers, facials, fragrance, soaps, and I would just gravitate it towards the makeup to where wherever I worked, I would end up becoming the resident makeup artist and start building a clientele. Now, how do you do that though? How do you start to build a clientele, you know, basically from nothing? How does that go? People like the way they look. Yeah. Yeah. So they make comments and they ask, where did you get your makeup done or something like that? Well, no, the people will just keep coming back for different occasions or when they're buying new products and How I got my big break is I did makeup for a woman that was the, well, I didn't know at the time, but I did my first wedding and I went to the wedding and did it and they were taking pictures. And when the Washingtonian came out, it was the editor in chief of it. And she had put a picture of me in the Washingtonian magazine. I ripped it out and walked to the Four Seasons with a piece of paper and asked them if they were hiring for a makeup artist. And I sat down and had tea. And then they said, had you ever been at a, a salon or a hotel, said, I've never done that before. They said, you're hired. Wait, no, but where do you get the courage to be able to do something like that? I don't know. It I just, just kind of, and you just yeah. thought, I'm going to go to the Four Seasons of all places. The best place I can think of and ask them if they'll hire me. And they did. And they hired me, right? And there. so the way they described it to you, do you think, obviously you had talent that they saw, but it's also, they just liked kind of that, the chutzpah, <laughs> like the chutzpah that you <laughs> had. Man, that's, and so how long were you working for the Four Seasons? I was there for 15 years. Is this a full-time position? It was a full-time position. No kidding. As a resident makeup artist. So you were doing all the events and what else there? Just meeting all the people coming in and out of the doors. Lots of dynamic people, actors, actresses, musicians, authors, you name it. Is there anyone in particular you remember that really, you know, strikes a memory for you? (laughs) Yeah, I have several, but Anna Nicole Smith was a really vivid memory for me because she was so outlandishly... (laughs) Fun and crazy. Oh, was she, like while you're doing her makeup, she's just out there and everything like yeah. that. And anyone else? Who else would be? There's plenty. I mean, the list goes on. Plenty. You know, I imagine, I'm thinking for myself, because I don't know personally a whole lot about getting makeup done. I've done it, you know, for various things I've been taped for. But I find that it's almost like the hairstylist, right? I mean, conversation starts to get started. You know, 
if I see someone more than once several times, there's a relationship that starts to build. It seems like super, such a vulnerable thing to do. I would think that that's part of what your skill is and why you are so popular and so successful is how you make them comfortable, right? Isn't it a very vulnerable place to be in? Yeah, I believe so. Well, what is your process like to do something like that? How do you handle that? I just be myself, go in and get to know the person, and I'm just really, really authentic to myself. But how does that look? Do you have any examples of that? Pretty much how I am right now. Yeah? <laughs> just be real. Just be yourself. Just totally real, authentic. Yeah. No airs. Just... You know, it's interesting. Earlier when you were talking about bringing out a woman's inner beauty and getting to know them and their personality, a lot of the people on the show, really almost everyone, planners, designers, photographers, it's like everyone's talking about the same thing, that it's all about this personal connection, you know, as opposed to just the technique that they have obviously honed and they have become masters. But I'm realizing that there's also a whole nother skill set to how you can loosen people up and connect with them, right? And be able to find some aspect of their personality that informs you, right? With what to do. Well, so how does that go? I mean, in terms of how you decide to help make someone up. I know that there's certain kinds of events and we'll get to that in a little bit so that I imagine there's differences between how you approach them. But as far as someone coming to you and saying they want it, are people, do you like when, are they very specific or do you prefer when you just kind of find this inner beauty yourself, kind of bring it out? I usually will have, if there's someone that's famous or well-known, I will research them and look back at their different looks and their aesthetic and what I feel like I can improve for them. And then if it's just someone else that's just a, a bridal or just someone else that just wants their makeup, I just talk to them, get to know them, get to know their comfort level, yeah. find out what they're wearing, what the function is, what time of the day, just all types of questions like that. And just be very natural and um, get to make friends with the person. Well, you know, obviously I'm not going to avoid the question about Michelle Obama, you know, which we all want to hear about. You've been her personal makeup artist for a decade, I understand. Mm -hmm. How did you meet her and get that position? I was working at the Four Seasons and I received an email from the White House asking me if I would like to audition for the role as her makeup artist. And they sent three pictures of the way she liked her makeup. And I said, okay. And I thought it was a joke at first. <laughs> and then I went in and I did her makeup. What did you think when you got that email? I thought it was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> My God. But you went with it. You figure whoever's d figured, pulling the yeah. joker in to go with it. I did my research and they were like, no, that's real. Wow. And tell me again. Okay. The audition was coming to see her where? Was it at the White House? At the White House in the residence. What was that like the first time going to the White House? Super nervous. Yeah. I looked at her and said, I'm nervous as shit. You told her that. Yeah. I'll bet that's what got you the gig. I don't know. <laughs> no, I think she liked her makeup. I did her makeup. I didn't ask her what it was for. I knew it wasn't going to be on TV. It wasn't going to be seen. They want to test you to see with the looks and see how it's going to work out. And um, it turned out to be a surprise birthday party for her. That's how it happened. I got a phone call like two days later asking me if I could come back in and do it again. And that continued to happen. And the next thing you knew, I was going on her first solo tour. Wow. Where was that tour? We went to Haiti and Mexico City. You know, it's interesting. There's so much to this. I mean, she's the first lady of the United States. And very sensitive position. I imagine there's an enormous amount of security you have to go to and, you know, you're being watched carefully. Also, she's considered really, I would say in a sense of fashion icon, you know, what is it like to work with someone like that? I mean, any kind of, not just first lady of the United States, celebrity, when you know that they're being looked at to that degree, I mean, even picked apart, you know, it's a very, you know, intense situation. Do you feel a pressure working with Very someone much. like that? Absolutely. Yeah. Can you tell me more about that? Like, you know, I want to make sure her eyelashes and hanging off her lipsticks, not smeared. She's not too shiny. You know, I just want to make sure she's really on point and that nothing goes wrong and that she's very comfortable and feels good. Has anything gone wrong from your perspective? No. <laughs> not going, is this wood? I think it's wood. So, and in terms of traveling, let's go back with uh, Michelle Obama. I mean, from what I understand, you are currently on the book tour, which is about to end, right? I, and you visited, I think, 24 countries? I've been to 24 countries over a decade with her. Over a decade. Mm -hmm. What about just the last few weeks for the book? We just went to eight in 12 days. Eight countries in 12 days. We did. So what is it like for you? What is a typical day? Like those of us, anyone here in the room who is a makeup artist, we have someone here and 
of course, it's important to all of us in this industry. What is a typical day like for you when you're working? Let's stay with Michelle. You're traveling with Michelle. What is a day like for you? Generally, you get up early, do makeup. She goes and does some type of community service project or something of that effect. And with the book tour, then we go to the stadium or the arena and um, get her ready to go out there to, for her meet and greets, for her friends and family, and then for her conversation. And you're constantly touching her up, and I guess from event, even within the same day, I imagine different events require different... I watch her very closely. <laughs> <laughs> and I assume there's a real trust that's been formed between the two of you. Absolutely. Yeah. There's a lot of times I'll do her makeup and um, she won't even look at herself. I'm like, that's rude, Michelle. <laughs> or it's trust. <laughs> it's trust. Wow. So... Also, I, from what I understand, reading up about you with Michelle, when you're traveling with her to different countries, like you talked about growing up, you know, learning about different cultures. And when you're traveling with her, I understand that you will put on certain kind of makeup or touches to honor the different cultures that you're in. Can you tell me something about that? I will. If we are in a somewhere like Cuba, I will maybe give her a coral lip or play up the color a little bit. If we're somewhere in the Middle East or something, I'll give her like some really nice liner or something like that. It just depends, but I, or, and also a lot has to do with what she's wearing. But yeah, I try to pay homage to different places that we are at. So how do you do that though? Are you researching the culture in some way where you're going to? Oh yeah, and I know what's going on before we get there. So I have time to prepare. Like the purpose of the event, the point of the event. Oh yeah. And do you have any, I'm sure we would all like to hear a really good story or two about her. Do you have something that you could share with us? Yeah, I have a few stories of, I don't know how interesting this is, but we were in Tanzania and the electricity cut off. So I grabbed my phone and put on the flashlight and had to start doing her makeup by flashlight. We're doing hair and makeup by flashlight, like pitch black. So that's pretty interesting. And um, one time for... The DNC were landing, and the storms were really, really bad, and we weren't going to make it in time to do touch-ups on the ground. So I'm touching her up in the plane, and she's literally holding my hand as I'm, like, touching her up. And I'm, like, on my knees and trying to, you know, make it all happen. Wow. Well, what about weddings? Can you tell us something about, this is WIPA, after all, wedding organization. What is your approach to handling weddings? What do you mean? Well, in, in terms of, I mean, of course, with couples let's say a bride, for example, again, I'm trying to imagine having to be the center of attention. Maybe people in the room can help me with this, but being the center of attention like that, you know that you're being photographed, you're being filmed, everyone's eyes are on you. I mean, let alone it's this highly emotional <laughs> event. I would think that they are particularly vulnerable that day and you have so much effect, right? On helping them to feel better about themselves. Yeah. I love it. I mean, I love everything about weddings. I love, you know, the occasion, the love, the flowers, the dress, the venue. I just love it all. I love to be involved in bridal. Do you have any good stories from a wedding? Mm, what do you mean? Exactly? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like any kind of a wedding where either it was particularly exciting or there was a moment maybe of a really big challenge and how you handled it. I've had a few challenges. I've had a bride that had a really bad migraine and had to lay in the dark and had to have really quiet. So to do her makeup in that type of situation was a little bit, you know, it was a little hard, but we got it done. And, you know, she went down the aisle and got married. What about the issues with weather? You know, you've got, what if you have a ceremony outside versus inside? I imagine that there, you know, if it's hot, it's humid, it's dry, it's cold. How do you deal with that? Holding sprays, primers, waterproof products. Yeah, so there's, it's specific techniques that you have for dealing yeah. with that. That's pretty much with every bride, though. What about dealing with uh, different nationalities and different ranges of skin tones? How do you, you know, again, I read, we heard the list of the kind of people that you've worked with. You're going all over the world, all kinds of people. How are you learning about that? Like to someone like myself who's a layman, you know, dealing with different nationalities, different skin tones. How do you know? what to do for each person. I just know it. I don't know. That's what I do. I'm an artist. You know, yeah, it's an, I'm thinking of like painters where, you know, they got a canvas, maybe it's a landscape. Yeah, they're all a canvas. Everyone's a that's canvas. That's how you look at it. Yeah. Because that's how you describe your mother. I think you said she was the first canvas that you had. She was. 
Do you love painters? I, I'm a painter still. You are. To paint. What yes. kind of paint do you do? I've tried an oil. I've done watercolor, but my favorites are acrylic for the simple fact that it's easy cleanup. So also, what about dealing with men? How different is that for you? I mean, much easier. Oh, easier. I would think oh, we're yeah. more difficult. It's like, uh, no, it's just put on a little concealer, powder, foundation, fix the brow, put on some chapstick. And that's all we really care about, isn't it? <laughs> you know, I'm also curious about the differences. So we talk about a wedding, celebrity. There's doing makeup for TV appearances, photo shoot for a magazine cover, for events. Can you tell me something about the differences between those and what your approach is from event to event? Because like you said earlier, you want to find out ahead of time what is the purpose of what they're going to be yeah. made up for. How do you approach that? Approaching like a cover of a magazine, you can play around more, you can talk to the photographer, you can talk to the editor of the magazine, you can talk to your subject, you can talk to the stylist, the hairstylist, everyone, and you guys just come up with a plan and um, execute it. I really, really love that. Runway, you can do a lot, lot more, you can have a lot more fun. Oh, because the entertaining about just the yeah, visual. You do, they're like, I want lace on my face, I want eyeliner, I want bottom lashes, top lashes or they want to be very clean and polished. It just depends, but you can have more fun with things like that. And, you know, I'm curious too, when you're dealing with a team, you know, whether it's a corporate, again, talking about an event, there's perhaps a stylist, like for a celebrity, there's the photographer who wants a certain kind of a look. You've got the, the event planner who's got their own agenda. How are you caught between different people? You can't be. But um, you just sort of, they know who you are, hopefully, before you get there on a lot of these gigs. Uh -huh. And um, you talk about it beforehand, you discuss it, but you go out there and you do what you were hired to do. That's why they hired But are there you. conflicts sometimes between people in the team? There can be, but I try to stay out of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm a team player. Yeah. So that's part of, I'm not, yeah. so in order to probably be as hired as you are is having to kind of work with the different team members diplomatically. Diplomatically, absolutely. Right, because you are being pulled in different directions. How do you draw the line between fashion forward and what is age or event appropriate? It's a fine line. I like to be fashion forward, but I am also like to be more timeless. My approach is I like a timeless look if I'm doing bridal, if that's what we're talking about here. If we're doing other types of jobs, I'll mess around with different types of looks and feelings. Huh. So... Also, I'm curious, you know, I've always thought about this. When you're walking around or you're here at this event, <laughs> we're going to make everyone feel I know awkward. what you're going to say. Are you? No. <laughs> <laughs> Just to make sure we're on the same page, what do you think I'm talking about? I'm looking at other people. Right, right. Are you all wondering yeah. that? You all wondering that? You all, see, everyone is wondering that. The women I'm are off. like, yes, you're off today. <laughs> okay, off. so you're not looking at anybody. I never do. No judges. I mean, unless it's like something really, really crazy. Yeah, or if you're, I would think if you're. Or it's really, really beautiful. Ah. Uh, but I mean, I'm really just some kind of off. All right. So everybody, you can relax now. <laughs> you know, also, I'm wondering how social media, because, you know, you've been doing this for a while, you know, and me too. And so we were doing what we do. I've, I'm in the music business before social media was a thing. Right. And I'm thinking for yourself, your work was mostly seen via magazines, a TV appearance, you know, film, documentary, something like that. Or I guess, you know, photographs at a film premiere or something like that. Now that there's social media and Instagram and everyone is snapping away pictures with their phones, like right now, how does that affect, does it affect you in any way? Do you think about that? Are you concerned about it? No, I'm not concerned. I like it. It's just more publicity for you. Yeah, it's fine. I like to see other people's work and see other people's artistry and methods and people's personalities. And um, it's a good way to kind of grow. It just depends on how you look at yeah. it. Yeah. What about professionals in business like for example here you know makeup is such a big part of how we present ourselves can you discuss that and give any kind of overall tips for people applying their own makeup you know as professionals out there in the world you know take it easy don't go crazy you can always add it's just don't be afraid of it it's makeup you can just wash it off but experiment and just kind of bring out your inner beauty and your own personality and um what makes you happy you know, before we go to questions and answers and give people in the room a chance to ask, I don't know if you all knew that. You do have an opportunity to do that of a major makeup artist here. And we don't want to be shy. You know, this is an opportunity for you to ask anything you want. How often do we get to sit in front of Carl? But before we do that, I also would like to know, 
looking for a makeup artist, how do you distinguish between a really good one and a great one? What would you advise people when they're looking or when their rec- a planner is recommending for a client? I would look at their portfolio. I would look at their reputation. I would look at other people that have worked with that person. And I would see the quality of their work. And it's just, just subjective. Just do it that way. Where are you going next with Michelle? You're flying out tonight. I'm going to L.A. to meet her. To L.A.? To L.A. And it's still the book tour? Still the book tour. How has the experience of this book tour been for you? It's been awesome. I mean, the, you're meeting other people, too, on this tour, right? Oh, yeah. I've met lots of great people, and um, it's just been a great experience. Wow. We got that mic? Okay. Over here, this table in the white dress with the glasses or blouse. And by the way, everyone, I'm going to repeat the question so that the audience listening <clears throat> to the podcast can hear what the question was. And just for the sake of the audience, how do you pick the line that you're going to use for the client that you're with? I have lines that I use, but it depends on the skin, oily, dry, mature, young, things like that. And things that I know that are tried and true. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyone else? I believe. Like if you have your favorite products, I'm more than happy to work with them too. Like I have to have this foundation. That's fine. So you do encourage people to bring their own. I don't encourage them. <laughs> <laughs> but if they, what if do, they do, right. If, if they, they do, problems. I guess it depends yeah. who it is too, you know. All right. We have another question over here. I'm going to repeat that. So just for a moment. So you've created a great reputation for yourself. What is the next goal that you have? And you are going to continue that in your career. I want to do more education and teaching um, makeup around the United States and the world. And who knows, maybe even write a book one day or something like that. What is your favorite feature on the face as a canvas to make up? The eyes. The, the eyes. Always. How come? Because not everyone can do their own eyes. Hmm. It's, it seems to be something I really, it's just my favorite feature to work That's on. That's interesting. People have jokes. How have you seen the makeup industry change, Carl? It's really, really blown up. I mean, there are so many makeup lines. There's so many makeup artists. When I came up, there was not that many makeup artists. Now there's just so many makeup artists. I just feel like it's really exploded. Yeah, it seems like that in all the fields in the event industry, doesn't it? We have another question, I think over here. Uh, I recognize this person, Megan Eli with OFD Consulting. So the question is, yeah, basically about headshots. You know, it's so complicated. We all have to get them every year. What recommendations do you have for that? I think you should really find a great photographer when you do that. And then hire makeup artists and don't go out of your natural form of who you are because it is a job. It is, you know, your headshot. So just be the best version of yourself and hire a really good makeup artist and a very good photographer and hairstylist. Your philosophy on eyebrows. My philosophy on eyebrows are they are sisters, not twins. So don't go crazy. Okay, well, I do like a thicker brow. Not too thick, but a thicker brow is... uh, a little more youthful, and once you start thinning them out, it's very hard to ever get them back. So, you know, have a happy medium, but I do like a fuller brow. And just for the sake of the audience, again, it basically, if I got this right, what are some of the probing direct questions that you're asking these women in order to find out about their personality? Yeah. What time of the day? What does your dress look like? Do you have inspiration pictures? Do you wear much makeup generally? Um, Where's the venue? Just really quiz them and ask them a lot of questions and ask them to show you pictures of inspiration so you can, people can say one thing, but it's actually, you want to really see where they're coming from. And then by working and working with people, you sort of just figure it out. But best is just to really ask for inspiration pictures and it's good to do a trial. That way you can fix and fine tune everything. So what is your favorite color and what kind of people do you want to teach? Groups, individuals, corporations? Well, my favorite color is like turquoise, and I want to teach more folks, just general folks, of how to do the makeup and how to represent and pull out their best features and feel comfortable and feel really good and secure about themselves. Yeah, like you. I have a question. So it's been, I was at a Facebook group, and one of the biggest conversations was how to get in front of us so that it is. So you were in the right place at the right time. Is that it? Or what recommendations do you have for individuals to get their first selfie? I did happen to be in the right place at the right time. 
It's also being comfortable around people when you come in. It's reputation will get you further than anything. How you make people feel really goes far. So I think it's just how you make people feel, your reputation, and timing. A lot of it has to do with timing and where you are. How you feel about the dogs? I love the dogs. They travel for vacation with them. I have traveled with them for different things, but I love the dogs. I love them so much. You're talking about Bo and Sonny, right? Okay. <laughs> so long-term right. skin care. It's eat right, get plenty of rest, drink plenty of water, exercise, all that stuff. Wear SPF, don't live a high stress life, you know, try to live a good life, all those things. And then makeup is second, but all that is really, really substance to, for makeup to really, really look great. Back to your four seasons When you were working at the four seasons, were you... Absolutely. So people about the board. Celebrities are just a very small part of my job. I'm there for everyone. I worked at a salon there. It was called George Salon. I was there for 15 years. And um, I still, I have a, now I have a studio on 13th and K at 180 Salon. I take regular folks all the time. That's my favorite. Celebrity is a very small part of the job. So she's asking yeah, about I, being affordable and, you know, at your level, the kind of people you deal with. Are, we don't want to break the bank, but we want to spend money, take care of ourselves. Yeah, no, I'm absolutely affordable. And you pay for what you get. Michelle, you can pay less. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm totally, I feel like, I mean, I'm busy. I book a year in advance with not celebrities. Anybody else? Questions? Last chance, everybody. Oh, here we go over in the front. What are your thoughts Ooh. on permanent makeup? That's a great question, especially the, the eyebrows. <laughs> Eyeliner. Yeah, lips. no, you can do it all. I've seen really horrific jobs, and I've seen jobs where it looks good. I'm like, that looks good. I guess it just depends on who you get, what you get done, maybe your skin texture. I'm not, I mean, I don't do tattoos for face. I love tattoos, obviously. But it just depends on the job and who you get to do it and something you really need to think through because you're going to have it forever. What's your favorite foundation to use for women of color? What does Michelle use? I'm not telling you that. <laughs> <laughs> That's very high security <laughs> clearance you must have. I like lots of different colors. I like Makeup Forever. I like Tom Ford. I like some Face Atelier. Not so much for women of color, Face Atelier. But, I, you know, I even like Bobbi Brown for women of color. There are some really great shades. But I think Makeup Forever is one of my favorites. Have you tried the Fenty product? I have. The Fenty products? And I love a lot of the Fenty yeah. products, especially the highlighters. and Yeah, I love it. Do you use it? Fenty. Yeah, what's your favorite? <laughs> Fenty. Fenty? It, it, it wasn't always, but um, I had a hard time finding the right shade. You know? And they oxidize a lot. They turn green. They turn blue. Yeah. So uh, Fenty works cool. Good. Yeah, I love Fenty. Any other questions? we got time for a couple more. In the very back? We're making Tara do a lot of walking in those heels. In those heels. <laughs> My question is, when you're going to a certain age, what do you do? Except when you're 25, kind of made up. Less is more. For a woman of a certain age, she's saying. Tinted moisturizers, luminous, not too heavy. Just keep it really pretty and simple. Unless you're going out, like, for evening, and it's... It just depends, but on a daily basis, just kind of refined and pretty and simple yeah tara is asking uh, just for the audience again more natural look is starting to become something and what do you recommend for that basically well very good you know facials cleansing exfoliating moisturizing just taking care of your skin really helps a lot and then using sheer products you don't have to use something heavier if you do just take your time don't go crazy i've got a quick question while we're getting the microphone over here what about for men what is maybe the main one or two things that a man should do for self-care for skin? Because we're not going to be as particular, so what would you recommend? Exfoliation and SPF. Exfoliation and SPF. Mm -hmm. What number SPF? Anything over a 15. Over a 15, okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. For grooms, what kind of skin care prep should they do for grooms? Kind of the same thing. Hydration, drink a lot of water, don't be dehydrated. Maybe go for a run, do a little working out, you know, do some work, get your blood really moving. SPF, exfoliate your skin, get that new skin, you know, shining through. That's how you get really beautiful skin. And um, 
you know, eye cream maybe. Just take care of yourself. What, one more over here in the front? <laughs> Tara, you're getting your exercise today. So 20 years ago yourself, what would you advise yourself not to do in this industry, if you, knowing what you know now? Don't doubt yourself. Go for it. Yeah. One more. Here we go. The difference between going for it or being tacky? Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. I think that it falls into a little bit of common sense. Like, you know, you know when someone's like really going for it too hard. Just be yourself and be authentic to yourself and go for what you want. Well, great. Well, I want to thank everyone for listening and for the questions. The rest of the schedule for today is that you have a chance to do some more networking. And Carl, will you be here for a little bit longer before sure you go will. to the airport? Absolutely. So let's give another round of applause for Carl Ray. Oh, thank you, guys. Yeah, I appreciate it. And Carl, your website is, is it carlray.com? It's carlraymakeupartist.com. carlraymakeupartist.com. We'll have that in the show notes, too. And your social media handle, Carl Ray M-U-A. Carl Ray M-U-A. What does M-U-A stands for? Makeup artist. Oh. All right. So I got, <laughs> what can I say? Egg on my face. All right. Well, again, so thank you very much for joining us on The Wedding Biz, Carl. Thanks, yeah, I appreciate it. And again, he's going to stick around. We'll be here. If anyone has any more questions, comments, rebuttals, thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for listening to my conversation with Carl Ray. Be sure to check out his website at carlraymakeupartist.com. Again, carlraymakeupartist.com. And check him out on all the various social media handles, uh, rather platforms, and his handle is at carlraymua, carlraymua. And please share this episode with everybody you know. It was really a lot of fun, and it really helps people to find us. And again, be sure to check out The Next Level on Wednesday as I talk with my guest co-host, Julie Sabatino of The Stylish Bride, about the interview with Carl. And again, thank you so much for listening. Our sponsor is Kushner Entertainment, and we'll catch you all next week on The Wedding Biz. Wedding Biz.